Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World, three-time Emmy Award winner Brian Cranston, who is known to millions of fans as Walter White on AMC's Breaking Bad, will make his Broadway debut as President Lyndon B. Johnson in Pulitzer Prize winning playwright Robert Schenken's new play, All the Way, which will open on March 6th at the Neil Simon Theatre. And I caught up with the company during a break in rehearsal. Hi, I'm Robert Schenken, the author. Hey, I'm Bill Rausch. I'm directing the play. Brian Cranston, actor. Uh, Robert Petkoff, actor. Oh, we should sell. Oh, yeah. Niggas. LBJ. Uh, Hubert Humphrey. J. Bernard Calloway. Ralph Abinett. Susanna Shulman, Lurleen Wallace, Mira Humphrey, and others. Uh, Michael McKeon, J. Edgar Hoover, Senator Robert Byrd, and a couple of others. James Eckhouse, Robert McNamara, Senator James Eastland, and some others. Steve Vinovich, uh, Senator Seller. Oh, my God. <laughs> FBI guys, aides, and understudy to Mr. Brian Cranston is okay. <laughs> Christopher Moore, Walter Jenkins, and Representative William Colmer. Uh, Ethan Phillips, uh, Stanley Levinson, Seymour Trammell, Deputy Lee Price, uh, uh, the barber, the tailor, and the uh, candlestick maker. <laughs> 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 Peter J. Fernandez are playing Roy Wilkins and Aaron Henry. Bill Timoney, I'm playing Senator Carl Munn from the great state of South Dakota and many of the most. <laughs> Betsy Adam, Lady Bird, uh, Catherine Graham, Catherine St. George, Crazy Irene, and somebody else. <laughs> Christopher Gurr playing Strom Thurman, uh, King of Norway, and others. Richard Poe playing Everett Dirksen, Judge Smith, uh, Colonel Sanders, no, Governor Smith, <laughs> <laughs> and the animals of Deep. Oh, it's me, huh? Uh, I guess I can. Hey, I'm Brandon Durden, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Rob Monroe, Coretta Scott King, Fannie Lou Hamer, Eric Lennox Abrams, David Dennis, and Bob Moses. William Jackson Harper, Stokely Carmichael, and James Harrison. John McMartin, Senator Russell. So what has this whole journey been like for you? Uh, you know, it's been it's been crazy. I, I have to say, when we first read the play in Oregon, we all knew that there was something remarkable and special about it. So to see it go this far has just been a dream come true for everybody. And to bring what this play has to say to this audience is great. So tell me what you're doing in the show. I play Walter Jenkins, who's LBJ's uh, closest aide. He's been with him 25 years and then uh, has to leave LBJ's side because of a scandal. So tell me what it's been like working with Brian Cranston. Uh, you know, he's a, Brian's an actor's actor, so he's an un unbelievably generous actor and uh, generous man, and uh, it's just it, it's been fantastic. It's been a pleasure. It's a great pleasure to be in scenes with him and share the stage with him. So let's talk about sixteen roles. What were the hardest challenges for you with going in and out of these people so fast? Well, uh, the changing from one to another wig, mustache, different, within a matter of like 15 seconds. It becomes like a dance backstage. You have three dresses, mustache, glasses, wig off, neck it off, and you walk out with a completely different new character and new accent. And that's the most fun part. But it's like a little dance backstage. You really have to, it takes a while to get it down. And the very first day we did it, we hadn't had a dress rehearsal, so we had no idea if we were going to make it. The backstage looked like noises off, literally. It was just hysterical. So how exciting yeah. is it working on this play? Oh, it's it's thrilling. It's thrilling. It's a thrilling time in history. It's a thrilling group of people to work to be collaborating with. And it's my Broadway debut after all these years, so I'm thrilled. I'm just, you know, happy as can be. What a way to come to Broadway. I know, I know. You know, thank God the off-Broadway community has supported me for many, many years. Um, you know, but it, this is a thrill, and it's, a, it's such an exciting show, really. Well, let's talk about the role that you're playing. Okay. Talk about her. Oh, you know, she's endless. You know, she's just endlessly fascinating, interesting, brilliant, brilliant woman, um, very highly educated. I did a lot of research going to Texas and I went to the LBJ Library and the LBJ Ranch and um, Wildflower Center and read and read and read and met different people who knew her and uh, she's just endlessly uh, in amazing to me and, and with incredible grace and incredible strength, uh, just a beautiful person. So 
you tell me what it's been like working on this play? Wow. Well, first of all, uh, last week I started working with Brian, you know, just Brian and myself and Chris, just to get me up to speed because I'm one of the new guys. So we worked on all of my scenes with him and, and you know, day one, you know, he's not an actor. It's like, hey, is it okay if I touch you or if I this or that? You know, right away it was a scene where LBJ is angry at Hubert Humphrey and he's grabbing me and throwing me around and, and, and you know, the actor just says, oh, yes, it's a playground, you know, it's really great. And he's not... You know, I love that he's not fixed on what he did before in Boston. He's he's starting it fresh, and, and it's really exciting, I have to say. What has this been like so far working on this play? Well, I have just started, so I'm one of the new people coming into it, but it is absolutely thrilling. It's like, it feels like a uh, sort of like almost like a shaman-esque experience seeing this character being brought forward through, in particular, through Brian Cranston. LBJ is in the room. It's your meeting history firsthand. 50 years later. It's thrilling. How excited are you to be working on this play? Very excited. Uh, we started in Cambridge. I actually uh, got this play uh, from a video. It was so funny. I didn't audition a person at all or do a callback. They cast me from a video. So I was like, really honored as like a relatively unknown to get cast uh, from a video. <laughs> it was like great. So what did you put on video? Uh, I just did both characters, uh, David Dennis and Bob Moses, and I just did my best, and just did one from there. And you're coming to Broadway? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about the two gentlemen you're playing. Uh, the first one is Bob Moses. Uh, he is the leader of SNCC SNCC, uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And the uh, second one is uh, David Dennis, uh, the leader of CORE, uh, Council of Racial Equality. And uh, both men were, uh, are, they're both still alive, uh, you know, civil rights icons, they're amazing, you know, just, it's just an honor to really play them. Uh, I got to meet Bob uh, on one of our, uh, during our last run, and he's just an amazing man, and it's just an honor to play him. It's amazing. Now, you've been in rehearsal for how long with this production? This is the beginning of my second week. Uh, they eased uh, the ones, the, uh, the actors that were not in, the, in Boston, which I think about five or six of us, and slowly eased us in. And then yesterday I met the entire company, and, and uh, I thought, wow, we're going to have fun doing this. Have you had a chance to work with Brian Cranston yet? Yes, most, most of my scenes are with Brian. I mean, he's a oh, wonderful actor, and he's wonderful as LBJ. You know, this is so rare, a play with a cast of 20 playing all these people. How exciting is that for you? And tremendously exciting. And, and of course now I, I realize I've not just memorized my lines, but memorize all these actors. But then I remember I did Showboat and there were 72. <laughs> and uh, after a while you just keep, you just call people darling. It? Exactly. <laughs> What are you looking forward to the most with bringing this play to a Broadway audience? Uh, I, I'm not thinking that far ahead yet. I'm just thinking I can't wait to get on the set and uh, get that feeling that, that so this is your home. And, and then the other fear sets in, with the audience. How exciting is this for you? Well, this, oh, this is great. Uh, this is like old home week. I've been gone for a while to L.A. for many years, but Brian and I, Cranston, we did a series together in 88 and have stayed buddies ever since. Robert Schenken, the playwright, I knew Bob as an actor 30 years ago. And there's three other really close friends of mine in this, so this is like Animal House. I would, I would look, almost expect a shaving cream fight before it's all over. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be something you're going to oh, tell yeah. us on opening night. Yeah. I was thinking of handing out squirt guns for opening night, actually. <laughs> But how exciting is this? This is a play with 20 actors. I mean, this is so rare. Very rare. Very. And my God, I'm so embarrassed. We, boy, did we never give Lyndon Baines Johnson any credit. This man did more than anybody since Lincoln and my generation. We hated him. We thought, oh, he started the Vietnam War. And my ignorance now, as I look back, and my generation's ignorance is appalling. It's appalling. This guy never had gotten the credit that he deserved. Yeah. So. Tell me who you're playing in the show. Well, I'm playing, uh, God, what's his name? One of these senators. I'm playing about 15 parts. What I'm really doing is I'm understudying Brian. I'm understudying LBJ. So if uh, he, Brian goes down, I'm going to be up there. Talk about that pressure. Oh. <laughs> I don't think he's ever going to miss, is he? No. My God, can't. He would, I think he'd go on with a broken leg. He told me, well, you're not going to be working. But uh, See, he's on the old school. I love that. Oh yeah, no, he's he's not planning on 
on ever letting me hit that stage. But uh, it's fascinating. Doing the research is just great. That it, what a character Johnson was. Wow. So I'm having fun doing that, and uh, and uh, God bless him. You know, if he goes for some reason. I'll be there if he, if he needs me to be. Well, first of all, so tell me, how many roles are you playing? I, I, I keep losing track, but I've also, the roles have changed. Yesterday was the first day of rehearsal for us, and I've already lost one role and got two other roles. So I'm not really sure. You know, we'll see. Opening night, we'll see. How exciting has this been working on this show so far? Uh, it's beyond thrilling. It has been, uh, I, Brian Krantz and I go back to 1983. We worked on soap operas together in New York when, when, we, were, when, when we first started out. Um, we've done a lot of stuff together over the years. Um, 2007, my wife's an actor, his wife's an actor. The four of us, uh, we talked them into coming to the Jersey Shore where we live, and we did a Neil Simon's Chapter 2, uh, the four-character play. So we've always done this kind of stuff together. And what, how this started was, he called me and said, look, I've got a lot of lines to learn. Would you come up to Boston and help me learn the lines? And while I was up there, he learned the lines, and then they asked me, well, would you stick around and understudy? So I know just about all the roles of the show anyway. <laughs> all of them? Uh, I would say all the, all the white males except for LBJ. <laughs> Talk about, this is so rare, a company of 20 playing so many characters. What are the challenges for you as a director? Well, I love directing plays that you read it and you think, that's impossible. How do you stage that? And that's what attracts me as a director. And so when Robert started writing scene after scene with immediate changes and people transforming themselves from uh, somebody from one party to somebody of the opposite party, uh, right on stage in front of your eyes, I thought that's a kind of play that attracts me. And uh, it's just been a joy to solve it with the design team, with the cast. Uh, I love it. You've assembled an incredible company for Broadway. Many friends of Brian Cranston. I love this family you put together. Yes, well, there are people who have been part of the project from the beginning in Ashland. There are people who've joined us in Cambridge and now people joining us for the first time in New York. So it's an incredible blend of people with deep experience with the material and people who are brand new to it, bringing fresh perspectives. What have you learned as a director at the different spots across the country with bringing the show to Broadway? Well, listen, the best thing in the world as a director of a new play is to get to work on it multiple times. And we got to do such a deep dive in Ashland with our resident company there, and then to get to make the script even stronger and the staging stronger in Cambridge. And now for Broadway to have a third pass at it, you just get to know the material so deeply and you get to improve the work, sharpen the work, make it more driven, more entertaining, uh, just better. Also the scope of this, I mean, usually a play has four or five actors. You have 20 playing yeah. multiple roles. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a circus. It's going to be, you know, I think it's for the audience. And I did see this in Oregon and was overwhelmed by it. Um, but that's kind of what's exciting, I think, is seeing everybody in different roles and getting the scope of history, like, wash over you. And you see how complex it is, how personal it is, you know, the emotional part of it, the way LBJ has to fight and use his wiles, his manipulation, his sheer force of personality, all of which Brian Cranston has in spades. He's kind of amazing to work with. So. Working on this play has been absolutely thrilling. I, when, when I was in rehearsal in uh, Cambridge, I recall sitting backstage being like, this is the best play I've ever been in. This is the best play I've ever been in. Because, one, because it's beautifully written. Two, because it's uh, impeccably performed. And three, because it is so important. This play is so important right now. I, my, my, my line about it is that it's timeless and it's timely. Um, and at the, at the 50 year anniversary of this play, um, the events of this play, it couldn't be more timely timely right now and so to be a part of that is as a as an actress and as an American frankly makes me so proud <laughs> so here we are here we how are. excited are you to be working on this play great I'm having a great time did the play in Cambridge uh, where I performed on the stage where I had made my professional stage debut 45 years earlier that's right and uh, I'm somewhat older somewhat heavier and the pay was about the same so, uh, <laughs> so now here we are in New York, where they pay you a living wage, and um, it's great. I mean, Brian is wonderful to work with. He's finding the humor in this, and, and uh, 
I mean, Schenken has written an amazing play, an amazing play, and it's only gotten better since then. Had a few trims, and uh, now it's really at fight and wait. It's a, it's a suspense play, and it's a very funny play. Uh, but it's also a play about a huge time in our history. The 11 months between the assassination and the re-election of LBJ, um, so many things happened then. <clears throat> and it was when I became political. I mean, I was 16 years old when uh, Kennedy was assassinated. You know, it was like it politicized everybody around me, or <clears throat> it drove them out of the whole notion of politics. You know, a lot of people had the attitude, look, if they're just going to shoot you anyway, what's the use of striving for anything? There were people who actually said that. And it really looked like the world was falling apart, unlike now. So, um, you know, it's, it, was, it was a very interesting and very important time. Okay. How many people do you play in the show? I, wow, that's a good question. I, I believe I play six, um, from Senator Strom Thurmond, that's my main one, to the King of Norway and everything in between. King of Norway, I know, right? <laughs> so what have the challenges been so far with finding all these people? Uh, well, the main challenge is to find my way in this company because it's an already established company from up in ART. There are very few of us who are new, so to open up my ears so that I fit into the music of the plays, it's already been established. Okay, how exciting is it to work on this? Oh my God. Well, it's my Broadway debut, for one. Um, I'm a Southerner, uh, so playing a Southern senator, although a dreadful one, is a great honor. And also, this piece of history is so important to where I grew up and the position of the South in the United States. And you're getting to work with Brian Cranston. Yeah, Tell me. That? Well, that's nuts, right? And you keep looking to the left and going, oh my God, that's Brian Cranston right there. Or, or to the right, and it's John McMartin, which to me, as a theater person, I mean, no disrespect, Mr. Cranston, but John McMartin, come on. <laughs> a lot of history in this show. A lot of history. It's wonderful. And Michael McKean, I mean, truly, the room is in a fantastic room. But tell me who you play in the show. I play Coretta Scott King, and I play Fannie Lou Hamer. So what is it like playing these wonderful historical women? Was the research all in the play, or did you do some research on your own? Oh, absolutely, having to do uh, research for myself also, just which is the fun of being an artist, because I get to delve into these ladies' lives and get to know more about them than um, I actually knew myself, because I know what we know, what we learn, um, you know, in school, and also just learning on my own uh, coming up, but this is just on another level, delving into their lives, which is so fascinating. Working in this room with 20 actors and Brian Cranston and John McMartin. <laughs> yes, I'll tell you what, I came in here yesterday, it was our first time all together as a group, and I was trying to scan the room and find Brian Cranston, and I could not, because he just, um, he blended in so well. He is just so down to earth and so wonderful. You started this show in Boston. Yes. How exciting has it been working on this play? Well, when I first read the script, I thought, this is a real play then with real issues. And um, I had to fight to have it work in my schedule, because I also teach. So I had to get time off from my teaching. I said, look, I want to go do this play. I'm committed to my students, but I want to go do this play. It's an important play. I don't know if it'll make it back to New York. Looking at the cast, there's a good possibility. I didn't even know Brian was involved at that point. Um, they said, no, 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 go, we'll cover, it's important to do it, it's good to have our, our uh, teachers um, working, it's good for the school. So I went to Boston and I thought, okay, this is going to be fun. Well, it blew up. And it blew up for a lot of reasons. Obviously, you got Brian Cranston, who's about as brilliant as you can get, and he's a wonderful guy, too. Um, the rest of the cast that they surrounded him with are all top-flight people in the business. And the play is just dealing with the world that we're in now um, and its resonances with 50 years ago. We made all this progress, yet we're right back where we started. It's a play for the times. It's just the timing is perfect. So It was wonderful up there. The response was great. And uh, I think it's going to do even better here. This play was commissioned by you, tell me. Commissioned by the Oregon Shakespeare Festival as part of their uh, American Revolutions project. The idea was uh, to do what Shakespeare did with Tudor history. What could we do that with American history? Well, they've commissioned 37 playwrights to write a, uh, a, a turning point in, in American history so that we might better understand where we were and where we might be headed. And uh, they, I'm pleased to say I was at the very first playwright they commissioned, and I immediately said, well, I want to write about LBJ. Tell me why. Uh, you know, I have, I have had this story in my head for a very long time. I grew up in Austin, Texas. <clears throat> my family knew LBJ peripherally. 
and I've always been fascinated by him. I mean, he is the, you know, a landmark figure in 20th century uh, America. He's a, a president who changed the country, high watermark in progressive politics, high watermark in civil rights, and Vietnam. I mean, he is a, a, a tragic figure, a man who did so much good and of course wrecked so much havoc and I am so interested in the complexities of this individual, this very complicated, contradictory man, inherently theatrical. What's it like playing a historical figure? Because you've done this before. It's, uh, it, it, in, the case, in the case of Everett Dirksen, it's intimidating because he's so distinctive. He had this, uh, these big glasses and this deep, deep voice and uh, smoked three packs of cigarettes a day. So it, uh, it, to try to be him, replicate him, is a real challenge. And I still haven't, I'll never feel like I've got him, but the closer I get, the more fun it is, you know. See, I love when actors say that because you're always polishing the diamond, aren't you? Every performance, you add another layer, don't you? Yeah, if you're ever really finished, you might as well close. Or do a film. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah it's the joy of trying to, to tweak it every night, make it a little better, a little different, a little, a little closer to the truth. You're always seeking that that magic moment when it happens without you knowing why, you know. Working with this cast of 20. Oh yeah, but not just 20, 20 amazingly gifted artists. You know, any one of these actors in this show could 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 be starring in, in, a, in a Broadway show in their own right. But the fact that they're all assembled here in one cast, it's like it's like playing on, a, on an all-star team or in the Pro Bowl, it's, it's, it's spectacular. And working with Brian Cranston. Yeah, working with Brian Cranston has it's nothing but a joy. He's he's so super focused. He's so giving, so generous. He's funny. He is hysterical. Uh, I don't think a lot of people remember LBJ as being a comedian, but luckily we get that side in the rehearsal room, and he brings a lot of humor to, to the stage as well. So I think audience is going to be very surprised, and they're going to easily forget this Walter White guy. Walter, they're going to see LBJ. It, it, it's fascinating. The transformation is, is remarkable. So you're coming to Broadway, your Broadway debut. Tell me how excited you are. <laughs> um, it, it does take some tempering so that you don't get too up in the air about it. But this is something I've wanted to do for a, my entire acting career. And for one reason or another, you're led this way or that way to do work, and it's good work and fine. Um, but at, at a certain point, um, I knew when, when Breaking Bad was coming to an end that I, I have now more control of my own destiny, right, as far as work is concerned. And so I wanted my choices to be based on, on artistic decisions as opposed to financial need or anything like that. And I thought the best thing to do is to probably step away from the ubiquitous nature of television and films and and I can't really say this but it felt like I'm, I'm able to do all my work and really pour it in and yet still kind of hide out on Broadway you know it's like because it, it's it's specialized and the and it's ephemeral and only the people who are in that audience at that time and us on stage can share that moment and that's very special, and I'm really looking forward to that. What an epic show. I mean, this beautiful play. Talk about Robert's words, the play in this role you're inhabiting. Well, it's a beautiful play. I mean, the, 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 the thing that I've been able to gain as far as ability, my if I'm really good at something, I think it's identifying well-written material. And I read this play, and I thought, oh, Robert Schenken wrote this beautiful play. It's historic. It's important. It's entertaining. Um, it has it all, and a, and a character that's as large as King Lear. Who, who would say no? You know, he had such a bad rap. You know, LBJ, I mean, what are the challenges been for you with inhabiting this man? Well, one of the things you do when you take on a character is you don't, you don't judge him. Um, you live in that skin, so it's as if you're looking through his eyes, so you don't see yourself as much as others do. And you can certainly justify actions and that sort of thing. Um, but he was, he accomplished a considerable amount of work. And uh, he's a big, big character and a storyteller and a backslapper. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just wonderful to play. My final question is you are known to millions of fans, of course, from Breaking Bad, who will be coming to the theater for the very first time to see you. And that will probably change them forever. How does that make you feel? If we can convert some television watchers to theater goers, 
I'm going to be very happy. I'm going to be very, very happy because it's a unique experience that you can't get watching a television show or watching a movie. It is exclusively reserved towards that experience in the theater. I'll see you.